Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here and we are doing a shootout today. We are looking at some popular vlog cameras. We've got the Panasonic G100 and the Sony ZV-1, both purpose-built vlog cameras, but for the sake of competition we thought we'd also put it up against a very similarly priced phone, the Apple XR. Now it needs to be said right off the bat, for this competition we are testing these products straight out of the box. That means no additional lenses, just what comes with the camera's kits, no additional microphones, just the built-in microphones, no additional attachments. We really want to see how these cameras can perform bare bones against each other. All right, it's time to talk about audio. You can have beautiful video, but if your audio is crap, nobody's going to want to watch it. So let's talk about which cameras have the best built-in audio. In third place, it is the Panasonic G100, which might seem surprising given that it has this advanced Nokia Ozo spatial audio system. It can track a subject as it moves around different parts of the camera, even behind the camera, and that's cool, but frankly, we didn't find that we used it very often. Most of the time we're vlogging right in front of the camera, and what we want is just good audio. We're shooting on a bridge right now, we've got running water, it's getting picked up in the whole mix, you know. Uh, I'm in front of the camera anyways, and the Ozo's gonna have no problem focusing on me. None of the cameras will, to be honest. This does have mic control, and it does have a mic jack, and if you're gonna put in another mic, well, you're not using the Nokia Ozo anyways, and most people are gonna graduate to doing that. So, overall, although it's an interesting system, we just find that the built-in microphones are fairly tinny sounding. There's no way to block them from the wind, and because of that, this gets our third place. In second place, we're going to give it to the Sony ZV-1. It actually has a really beautiful mic system. I wouldn't say it's rich and warm. It's, you know, clear. It comes with a dead kitten in the box. That's for protecting the microphones. It's not actually a dead kitten, uh, but it's great when you have a breeze. It controls any of the wind noise. Overall, you can still add a microphone. You've got mic adjustment levels, and this makes for a very nice starting kit out of the box. Now, in the number one place, we're going to give it to the Apple 10R, which might seem crazy, but think about it. You can be on a city bus having a full on conversation, invading everybody else's privacy, and even though there's a lot of ambient noise, the people at home can hear you quite clearly. That's good audio, and that's a smartphone's main function. So the Apple XR microphones sound nice and clear. They handle wind noise very well. You don't get any hard P's or S's. And of course, you can add microphones if you want to later, but we're talking straight out of the box, and the phone does deliver. Our next category is video quality. Not only do you want to have awesome B-roll and footage of everything that you're recording, but you want yours truly to look as good as possible. In third place, we are going to give it to the Apple XR. I mean, first off, Gotta keep in mind that this camera does have some big pluses. It does record in video HDR mode, which means those clouds behind me probably look awesome right now. And it's the only camera out of the bunch that can do 4K 60. However, for vlogging purposes, there are some major downsides. First off, I've probably got like a really waxy looking face. It does strange things to skin tones. Also remember that when we're doing the vlog style, looking at the screen, we are using the lower resolution selfie camera. And especially when you get into low light, that can look pretty rough. In second place, it's gonna to go to the Panasonic G100, although this camera does have some very powerful, nice video features. First off, you are getting the largest sensor out of the bunch, and it does give you decent low light performance. You also have interesting options like adding other lenses and putting filters on those lenses. However, that is not considered out of the box, so we'll scratch that right now. You do also have full manual control, which works great. However, there are some issues here. If you're shooting 1080, this camera is awesome, but if you're shooting 4K like I'm doing right now, you do get a pretty heavy crop which not only hurts our image quality but makes the vlogging angle here pretty crap you can see not much of the background behind me compared to the other two cameras now when it comes to HDR the Apple 10R looked fantastic because it shoots that natively however you do have an option here on the G100 to shoot vlog L that does give you more dynamic range as long as you know how to work with that in post so that might be something you have to graduate up to in first place, we're going to give it to the Sony ZV-1 because we feel this gives you the most creative control. Now, first off, you do have an ND filter built in, so you don't have to buy one separately, and out of the box, that's a big advantage, so you don't get those ultra-fast shutter speeds and bright conditions. You also get full manual control. You can be very creative with this camera. Uh, this camera does have S-Log, so if you do want to get that extra dynamic range, just like Panasonic, you have an option to do that, albeit with more work in post. As well, you might think that this camera is not going to be as good in low light because of its smaller sensor but keep in mind that the built-in lens on this is a much brighter lens and thus we actually find you get better low light performance if you're looking at the kit lenses out of the box. The other thing here, when this camera shoots 4K, it super samples that 4K. Better quality, sharper video, and you'll notice far less crop than the Panasonic. That is a huge advantage. It's still there, but it's not nearly as bad. 
Autofocus is next because the fact is, if you're vlogging yourself, you're not gonna have somebody helping you to pull focus, right? You're gonna be dependent on the camera's capabilities. So while I'm talking in front of camera, I'm gonna be moving back and forth, but really we did some more challenging tests separately in lower light. That's where we based our findings on. We'll cut to those to show you. All right, so in third place, we are gonna give it to the Panasonic G100. Now it does have face and eye detect, which works quite effectively, but when we did our first look at the G100, we had a lot of problems with our shots just kind of losing track and going to the background and going out of focus. Now we are using new firmware and it does help quite a bit. We're also shooting this video today at 30 frames per second and the G100 actually does autofocus better at 30 frames per second. It seems to be doing a pretty good job. Let's also keep in mind that the kit lens, the 12 to 32, does give us a little bit of depth of field which helps smooth that out. But if you do go to wider aperture lenses, you're going to want an autofocus that doesn't lose too much and that's still where we think the Panasonic G100 is weaker than the other two. Second place for autofocus performance, we're actually gave it to the Apple 10R. Now, largely it's because its small sensor and lens combination gives you tons of depth of field. That's why the phone has a very easy time keeping things in focus. But it also means that as I move forwards and backwards, that the transitions look very gradual and smooth. You can't be as creative as you can with the other cameras. However, when we're vlogging, we really just want consistency. We want to be in focus and the Apple 10R does that very easily. And so that's why straight out of the box, this gets our number two in. Our first place winner for autofocus, it's gonna go to the Sony ZV-1. But why are we in a slightly different location? The battery died, we had to charge it. It's a Sony ZV-1 thing, you can watch our video to learn more. Now, what we really love about the ZV-1's autofocus is it has Sony's excellent eye detect autofocus as well as real-time tracking. It just works, it's convenient, it's easy, and you can trust it. The other thing that we really like, you've got a very simple one-touch selector for depth of field. So with one button, you can go to very soft background. Uh, that is nice for beginners to get that more dynamic look, especially when coupled with autofocus up close for vlogging. And one other thing that we want to point out, Sony has an excellent product showcase autofocus feature on the ZV-1 where if you bring a product up in front of the lens, it's smart enough to know that that's what you want it to focus on. It'll stay there, pull it away, and it goes back to you. These are all things that are very convenient for someone who wants to get into some serious vlogging. All right, next thing we're gonna do is talk about lenses, specifically the kit lenses that come as standard equipment with the cameras that we're talking about. And I am gonna give you full frame aperture equivalents, okay? But that's really just so we can get an idea of what kind of depth of field we're gonna get, whether it's shallow or deep. Now in third place, it's gonna to go to the Apple 10R because the fact of the matter is this, okay, we don't have any sort of optical zoom. We just have the one lens. We're talking about the front facing selfie camera because that's the one that's gonna be pointing at you when you're vlogging off the screen. It's 32 millimeter equivalent focal length and it's aperture in full frame terms is well over F20. So that's why we've got so much depth of field. You don't have the option to really do an optical zoom and you don't have any option to really, you know, soften your background with thin depth of field. This is the way it's gonna look and that is why this is in third place. In second place, we're looking at the Panasonic G100's kit lens, the Lumix Vario 12 to 32. We love this lens. It's compact. It's pretty good optically. Gives you a nice optical zoom of basically a 24 to 64 millimeter full frame equivalent in focal length. What really keeps this lens from shining though is it's fairly slow apertures. Full frame equivalent for depth of field, about f7 to f11. Not great, not terrible, but you know, it's pretty middling. Now, this does come with one big caveat. That is that you can get interchangeable lenses for the G100. You have the entire line of Micro Four Thirds lenses, but we are trying to keep this competition to what's in the box. And let's keep in mind that if you got something super sexy like the Panasonic 12 millimeter F1.4, you know, you're looking at tripling the price of the package basically. In first place, our winner is gonna be the Sony ZV-1's built-in lens. Sure, it's not interchangeable, but you get a really nice 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent focal length here. And when we look at the apertures, we're getting for depth of field in full frame terms an F5 to F8 lens. That gives us the shallowest depth of field of the three cameras we've looked at. You could probably see it in the background right now. And for that reason, this is gonna be our number one winner. So we got a nice little pathway to do our stabilization test. I'm gonna vlog this next part. Now keep in mind, the best way to get stabilization is to use a selfie stick and both Panasonic and Sony have those as optional accessories. And of course for an iPhone, you can just get whatever selfie stick you want. But 
For this test out of the box, we're going to be hand holding these things with active stabilization on, the best stabilization they have to offer. Let's see what the results are. Third place sadly does go to the Panasonic G100. I mean, the stabilizer is effective. We've got lens-based image stabilization in the kit lens, and I've got the electronic stabilizer turned on as well. The problem is that look at that crop. In 4K, it's just so intense. You can barely see my hair, which is a real problem. You can barely see my beard. That's another real problem. You can and lessen the crop by shooting in 1080 but if you want to shoot in 4k this makes it really really brutal all right the number two position goes to the sony zv1 now we have lens-based optical stabilization as well as our electronic stabilizer sony's active steady shot system but what you can see is much less of a crop than the panasonic you still do lose a little bit of your frame in 4k but this is far more usable and that's why this edges out the number two position Number one win, we have to give it to the Apple 10R. We're still getting a nice frame. We're not getting that super tight crop like the Panasonic has. And although Sony has good stabilization, when we look at the 10R files afterwards, they just look smoother and more stable. And so that's why it gets the win. So final conclusion time, it looks like the Panasonic G100 comes in third place. You know, although I do wanna say it's vastly improved compared to what we first played with when we had our first look at the G100, especially in terms of autofocus, it is still underwhelming, especially when we consider the second place winner, which everybody has in their pocket. It's the smartphone. The Apple 10 R actually did a surprisingly good job. I mean, maybe image quality is not great. I still didn't like the soft skin smoothing that I was getting in video, but dynamic range looks great. It's stable. The lens is usable and the screen overall has to be mentioned. It's going to be the nicest way to actually see your frame yourself compared to any of the articulated screens on the other two cameras. So you very likely already have an iPhone in your pocket. Why would you spend the extra money to get the number one camera in our contest, the Sony ZV-1? It all comes down to creative control. If you want to take things further beyond just simple convenience, the ZV-1 gives you that shallow depth of field look when you want it, built-in ND filters to control your shutter speeds, you've got creative manual control of your video, decent stabilization, and fantastic autofocus. On top of that, you get some really useful vlogging features, for example, like the product showcase feature. So all in all, if you've got the budget for it, the Sony ZV-1 might be able to take your vlogging further. Now, if you want more information, we've made videos on all three of these products that we talked about today, so please check those out. Also, go to deepyourview.com. There's lots of resources to help you choose the best vlogging camera for your needs. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Instagram and Twitter, please check those out. Subscribe to the channel to see more of these shootouts. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you soon.